With the Snapmaker 2 ready to ship any day now, is it still worth getting the original Snapmaker? I think it is. I've got a little upgrade I want to do to mine today, but while I do it, let's talk about why I think so. As I mentioned, I'm going to be doing some surgery on my Snapmaker today. I'm going to be installing the Z-Axis extension kit, which allows you to print taller than you normally can with the stock printer. But first, let's talk a little bit about the Snapmaker 2. So the Snapmaker 2 is going to start shipping sometime soon, and it is undoubtedly better in just about every way than the original Snapmaker. Like the original, it's a 3D printer, CNC and laser engraver all in one, but it also has things like automatic bed leveling, filament runout sensors and all kinds of extra doohickeys and gadgets. But one of the biggest advantages of the Snapmaker 2 is its size, or three sizes. One of them is a little bit larger than the original Snapmaker, one's quite a bit larger than the original Snapmaker, and one's way bigger than the original Snapmaker. Most of the people I've seen online who've ordered a Snapmaker 2 have gone for one of the two larger sizes, so why would you possibly want the original Snapmaker if you've already ordered a larger Snapmaker 2 or already own a larger 3D printer? Well, I'm going to get on with this upgrade and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. Whoops. Ooh, that's bright. So here is the Z-axis extension and inside we have a quick start guide which basically tells you go look at the video tutorial I've already watched and oh, the arm itself wrapped in some foam. So here is the linear Z-axis extension kit and as you can see it sits quite a bit taller than the original allowing you to get prints this much taller. So I have some destructions here. So I'm going to be following these as I go. Get the printer and the Z-axis extension linear module ready. Consider them ready. Uh, remove the filament holder. So why would you want to get a Snapmaker if you've already pre-ordered a Snapmaker 2 or have another larger 3D printer already? Well, bigger printers come with some great advantages, but they also have a couple of drawbacks as well. As larger printers, they have larger heated beds, which often take longer to warm up than the small ones. I've seen some large printers. I don't know what the Snapmaker's warm-up time is for the bed, but I've seen some large printers that can take half an hour or more just to get the bed up to temperature for printing PLA. If you just want to print something small, then the Snapmaker could be heated up and done before the other ones even laid down any filament. Detach the X-axis with the 3D printing module. And... okay. Undo this wire. I know what that wire's for. That one's for the hot end. That one is for the x-axis. And I am going to get photos of these or I'm going to forget what goes to what. So I am going to photograph that and then I need to make notes on it. So we'll unplug all these. The other big advantage of larger printers is that you can make larger prints. I mean, that one's kind of obvious, but the problem with larger prints is that they take longer to print. When you scale up an item to 200%, you're not just doubling the print time, you're essentially multiplying it by eight. You know, you got to remember when you scale up in 3D, you're scaling in three dimensions. So you're doubling it, doubling it again, and doubling it again. What was an eight hour print now takes close to three days when you scale it to 200%. Now, that's just a fact of life that you accept when you get a larger 3D printer. But the problem is, if you want to print something small in the meantime while that's printing, you have to wait until it's done. And your printer might still have a week to go. So uh, I don't know about you, but a lot of the stuff I print is fairly small. It's little things. It's like MPF battery clips and spare lens caps because I keep losing them. <laughs> but when I just want to print something out quickly, I don't want to have to wait three, four, seven days for my printer to finish printing before I can print something really, really small. So now we have to take off the control panel. And finally, we remove the Z-axis from the base. So having a second printer is very, very handy alongside a large one, not just because it means you've still got a printer you can print small stuff on while your big one's busy, but even if you've only got a big one, if you're just going to print something small, it can take ages to heat up, which ultimately means it's going to end up being more expensive to actually print the thing. So that is the original 
the axis removed and if I stand them up side by side now you can really see the difference between the two. So this one can go over there. Now the assembly process for this is essentially what we've just done in reverse. So we'll screw this on. Wow, that looks really, really tall. So now we'll screw this back on that way. So I've shown in other videos how good the print quality is from the original Snapmaker. And, uh, and this little upgrade that I've been doing today is only going to enhance that cause now it can print bigger because it can print taller, but the heated bed's still the same. So it's still gonna heat up just as quickly as it did before. So let's plug some of this in before I forget what it was for. So that one's the ZZ number four. Was it number four? See, this is why I wrote it down. And then this will go to the extruder head when that's ready to go on, which is what I'm gonna screw back on next. Now, don't take this video the wrong way. I'm not saying don't get a Snapmaker 2 or don't get a larger 3D printer. What I'm saying is consider having two printers, basically. If you're regularly printing out small objects, there's no point having a big printer just to do that. If you're printing big stuff, then yeah, by all means, go for it, get a big printer, but have a little one as well. Cause if you're printing little things and you fire up a massive 3D printer, it's gonna take longer to heat up the bed. It's gonna waste more energy and more heat by heating up a much larger bed because you're heating up areas you're not even gonna use. Both printers have advantages and disadvantages against the other. A large one, obviously you can print really big. A small one, you can print really quick. Everything feels nice and good and solid, and wow, that's really, really tall. And now it's on, it's time to update the firmware, so let me go grab a laptop. So I also, I'm gonna need to plug my printer into the laptop because I have to be able to connect to my printer and send G-code to the printer in order to give it commands as part of the upgrade process. So I also need the Snapmaker's USB stick because we gotta put the firmware file onto there. So we'll go and do that. This is the latest one. Rainy posted it on May the 30th. And you can see this one is specifically to add support for the Z-axis extension module. Download. So just turning it on has automatically found the firmware update and that's that updated. G-code M1025M1 is all we need to tell the firmware, hey, you've got the Z-axis extension installed. And then we just need to go into the software to tell it the new build volume of the machine. And it looks pretty cool, nice and tall. I have a Snapmaker 2 on the way at some point, but when it arrives, I'm not gonna be getting rid of the original Snapmaker. I mean, I've got three other 3D printers, but I still use the Snapmaker for the small stuff because it heats up quick, it can print really quick because it's so well built and solid. For small items, it's 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 brilliant, it's perfect. I mean, there's, there's nothing really more that I need for printing smaller stuff. And like I said, I print a lot of small little items that you might otherwise have to go and order on Amazon and wait a couple of days for it to show up or, you know, so it's, yeah, it's very, very handy. Right, now I've got to power this back up, level the bed and slice some files and get a test print going. So I think I'm gonna leave it there. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and why don't you go ahead and subscribe while you're here. If you have any questions about the Snapmaker, the Snapmaker 2 or the Z extension module, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.